Hello and welcome to the City Newsroom, live on City TV. You can also watch us on DSTV Channel 363. My name is Prima Dunami. And my name is Nana Tufuobwating. Coming up. Electoral Commission assures no Ghanaian will be disenfranchised in the upcoming 2020 general election. Meanwhile, the Commission suspends its pilot voter registration exercise in the Western region. A Speaker of Parliament shoots down Boko Central MP Mahama Ayariga's appeal for dismissal of the EC's new identification requirements. Now also coming up, New Patriotic Party settles on June 20 for its parliamentary and presidential primaries, which will be held at electoral areas due to the coronavirus outbreak. And later, five years after the June 3 disaster, we speak to some of the victims on life after the tragedy. This is the City News Room. We'll be right back. Businesses are evolving with the changing times and the City Business Festival is doing the same. In the month of June, the City Business Festival goes digital. City TV in collaboration with APSA Bank will give SMEs the opportunity to reboot their businesses with expert forums, discussion platforms and interactive Zoom sessions. There will be a lesson for every business. Join the virtual business forums every Tuesday in June at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and gain the knowledge you need to kickstart your business. Explore new ways of engaging your customers with the e-commerce forum on Tuesday the 9th of June at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get tips from the Agribusiness Forum on how to create another career in agribusiness on Tuesday the 16th of June 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And get all the industry knowledge with the trade forum on the topic. Will export trade be the same again on the 23rd of June 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Revamp your business and work environment this June with the virtual business forums only on City TV every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. To be interactive and ask questions pertinent to your business, join in the forum via Zoom. To participate via Zoom, register by calling 0205-973-973. That's 0205-973-973. City Business Festival is powered by City TV and Absa Bank with support from the Ghana Investment and Promotion Center. On Footprints this weekend, an accomplished Army General, Major General Henry Kwame Anidoho, tells his story. When I went to Pando, I ran away. You mean when you went to Pando when? In 1957, because of the seniors' treatment that they were giving to us, and I recorded it in my autobiography. From Kumase? No, from my village to Pando. Uh -huh. Then Pansek. because I couldn't take to Pantek, uh -huh. I couldn't take the punishment, so I ran away back home. <laughs> and my father ordered me to go back. Back? <laughs> that he was not going to accept that at all. Uh -huh. So I went back to Pando, and that was when I took a decision that I would not run away from anywhere again. Mm -hmm. They were fighting, still, they were killing people. Yeah. And Ghanaians were there, Nigerians were there, but Nigeria didn't also have a large, uh, uh, what should we call it, uh, uh, naval vessel. Oh, okay. We didn't have. So what the two countries which were playing the lead role, we did was we put our troops on commercial vessels. Black Star Line was still there then. Mm -hmm. And these were escorted by the naval uh, gunboats into Morovia. And when our troops were landing in Morovia, they had what we call in military terms, opposed landing. Opposed landing means they were shooting at them when they were trying to establish a beachhead. And looking back, I think we should have staffed General Aquino's headquarters with enough senior Resources. Ghanaian officers. Mm. Because staff officers mean a lot. Yeah. Those who will really make things happen. happen yeah. Because the commander is engaged with uh, a lot of thinking. Negotiations, and, and negotiations while shells are dropping. Fighting is ongoing. Mm. Some people should be doing the, you know, thinking, putting things together. But he was 
and I think Dogo Yaro also. Join us on Footprints this Saturday with Samuel Atamensa as one of Ghana's celebrated military general Henry Kwame Anidoho takes us through his story. Footprints show this Saturday at 9 a.m. and Sunday at 4 p.m. on City TV. City TV, it's your world. Footprints is sponsored by Bethel Logistics Company Limited, experts in shipping logistics. It's been five years since the ghastly twin fire and flood disaster claimed the lives of over 150 persons. This spot, which used to be a fuel station, is where most of the action took place. With people seeking refuge from the rains, but little did they know that they were going to meet their untimely death. Half a decade after, there's still evidence of that particular incident as the ruins of what used to be commercial vehicles tell their own tale. On this edition of the City Newsroom, we want to understand what has become of the victims of this disaster. Have they been compensated? And then, of course, we explore all the other angles associated with this story. My name is Nanatu Fobwating, and this is the City Newsroom. We have the chairman of the June 3 Victims Association uh, to help us understand what life has been for himself and, of course, uh, some of his members after the incident. Welcome to the City Newsroom, sir. That's it. Thank you, sir. Yo, tell us, um, how do you feel, and then um, have you been supported in any way? Medasi, Nedi Kain. But Medina had the NJB and the Mummy. Medina would be the NJB and the Mummy. At the end, you see, you know, a year I bind that there, no, no, was no, and this year I bind none, I was no, and my eight years here, say, we accident in SC, and T. Obershayina, our hospitals, no, and a hospital, no, and a hospital vacuum. Hospitals, no, about five hospitals. Quality rate 37 police hospital. And say, or they support a victim for no. So, you will be every hospital or no coffee. Or more money, 10,000 Ghana city. Ah, yet it is a canoe, 100 million set, Nipano, or qua, or say about hospital. You are hospital in a beginisica, a beer baby or dash, or nibble be a dinner tea cotto. And to emphasize, you can be in Shannon, who said in home by a day, Eberton, Namre Pomuno, or my empathy sicker. And a day and a toy to the Muntin. I have seen it. Siciano, a Pesia Tiasia, it is Sas Canadia, who fully say, and to Buanco, Fuajin on the Abuamo, and to one Casano Mope and Patesica, if you are buying home. Me Patroani. Say, say, ye pen Patesica and Efra Bain Ho. A more de Boybia and I had a year of Fra Bano, and Tim Wadi, a year before Bano, because I bump now what you call my Bibia, and I know Hanonso on four Bibian free on one Casani Futum Fania Day, and my June Tet Friday and Fire Victim Four. We've come to Opekuman here in Kaswa, the home of another victim of the June Three. Uh, disaster. We want to find out what he's been up to. So come with me. Let's find out together. Well, Mr. Suraj, we understand this into farming, and so we are currently uh, on the farm. It's an animal farm, more or less. Uh, he has his home also here. And so well, let's welcome him to the city newsroom and find out uh, typically what a day in his life is. Welcome to the city newsroom, sir. Uh, and Major Miso Makwaba. So um, basically, this is your farm, but you live here as well. Yes, I'm live here. Yeah, I am here. Ah, but my tenant was bit. We, my landlady, no, my mum is saying, "Me, me, my Mbibia, Oha." On station now, room, my mom's a favor and said, Maybe, yeah, 
Alright, let, let's go through and then we'll, we'll see how it is and then we can have a discussion on the June 3 uh, disaster itself. So I, I want to believe we're going to the hen coop. Uh, yeah, that's the hen coop right there. We're going to have a seat and have a conversation with regards to what happened uh, on that fateful night at Circle. So what do you remember from that night? The mechanic say, uh, when is it certain this year? Um, and I do to say seven thirty. I'm a point my coffee. But me do feel now, now me tea, Nima and Miss Atiha. But yeah, we can snan as we can snan a bahasi. And the me do feel and I must say, I'm wife and buy. And so that's what I mean to can, of course, I'm a confirm my wife, I be fee. Me to can, me could do an accept with Bia Flade. My family wife, I took in more. You have a coffee, Miss Mammy Top of Dizzy or Felicitation. Middle Felicitation, and so call me Indian, and I'm a mechanical off. And I miss my wife, me and my wife, and my brand, my bias from. Yes, I be cross up by Vienna City on now on a Friday, and it's okay. You drink a crana, and so much an echo. I have seven dani machina mushi 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 Sometimes so me so taxi biya obi an family. Then I made an anti call at the backup polyclinic. Me do an anti call bogey to a mu big it na mu eh get man kwa humi an ojani se samen. Me say get man kwa ne humi si na ojani the next phone so. Then then I made an anti mufa an anti call rich. Me do rich na mu so me situation the amu the amu timi wa me say that seven. Me manage back when and I mean your car and I made a quarter seven. Me could do the seven in the meeting, my nest me, 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 and Casnam Pesemichom say, My wife, ne, ne, ba, ew, ew, a count, but almost she should be meant to make Casabian. Minusa Catami Hoshi. What happened to your wife and your brother? Omu, ye. Mishrom, Namin, Miss Omu, Graham. Intim made that third seven for one year. Die a bit discharging me, in fact, discharging him. And a psychologist for by a number catch him say my wife away from me brand so we free so it's been five years uh well you've received some level of assistance but obviously you still have uh some challenges with which you need to be assisted uh what is your plea or what request uh would you make and then also what advice would you put out there to forestall any such event from occurring um, that's, uh, uh, Munia delegate you for a baby Sam say, and I made doubts in now my own dinner at no Edma Ben and beat my ear. And I'm so meet my family, Edma, family name, a condo, but Nina is cousin. I'm so okay, ye me a nephew on a umbation or mumbo family. Amy and a moon, or mommy scanner, may a such a night I will have seen any back on me. And I'm a cotto, four hundred bass. The gum a honey a hassy, not trended or her enna ended or has seen. Okay, now, oh, my satisfying, now a queen, now cocono, I a cassacassy. Nancia locked down now we a mentimena, a conda, Casapol clinic for two weeks. In Timmy Jachima, my wife said, I'm sure I'm one man. 
Mamba we so a rule and regulation awa do not say o mamu ni we say o fi omu ye ndi me ba na koko ni na e yare ndi me flavored for e be fe e ni be ba so na koko 350 fm ba kan na kan ndi me share na me sia we the me papa e na me sorry ko family so e chin 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 e bi se bi sa but on koko e juma mu and I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, to say, I'm going to say, for the meantime. I'm going to say, 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 I'm so that's the story of uh, Kasim Suraj. Uh, now he has gone into animal farming to make ends meet. Uh, but of course, it has not been easy. It is still not easy. We're still on this matter and we're going to bring you more on this particular subject. What reliefs are available to these victims? We've come to the office of Mr. Seji Saji, uh, Deputy Director General in charge of technical and reforms at the National Disaster Management Organization. Welcome to the City News. Thank you. The uh, disbursement, the figures, did they cut across? Was it one figure for all? Or we looked at uh, the degree of injuries and then we issued specific amounts to these victims? So what we did was we tried to do a categorization. We had a category of uh, families that lost loved ones that have not been supported. Uh, there were quite a few. Then we have uh, those who were severely uh, injured and those who had minor injuries. So those were the three categories that we, we used. Now what happened is that a certain benchmark sort of has been set because when the incident occurred, government has already supported uh, those families that lost loved ones with 10,000 Ghana cities and uh, some of the injured with also 10,000 cities, severely injured with 10,000 cities to pay their uh, hospital bills at that time. So our disbursement went in that direction. But we realized that uh, if we were to do 10,000 cities across board, uh, the funds available to us was not going to be enough, so hence the categorization. So we supported those who were severely injured with 10,000, those families that loved, uh, loved ones too, with also 10,000. Then the minor, uh, those who suffered minor injuries, we supported them with 8,000 cities. But there was uh, an outstanding case of uh, one of the victims who has been in hospital since 2015 to 2019 when we were doing the disbursement so we visited uh, the gentleman at the hospital had discussions with the hospital and uh, they provided us with a bill the bill was that very was that high but we were able to support in the first instance with 40,000 then also the 25,000 that was in the city FM uh, account. So in all, the gentleman had about 65,000 to support his medical bills. So is it to say that we've exhausted the funds available to us for victims of June 3? Yes, we, we, we have um, exhausted the fund. But as I said, uh, in our terms of reference, we were to also look at the funds available try that's why we contacted all these various institutions that were reported to have raised some funding around the time that the incident occurred and as i told you it was only a uh, city fm that we were able to get some uh, monies from which added to the two hundred thousand dollars that uh, the benin government uh, uh, supported Ghana government with. 
some of these victims are still scarred for life. Uh, those without physical scars have the memory of the loss of their loved ones. Have we ended the process or are we still open for or to receive some more funds to assist some of these persons? Well, as, as, as we speak, um, the, uh, we don't have any funds specifically dedicated to us supporting uh, such persons at this particular moment. But that is why um, after our disbursement, we have had various engagement and call on the public to also support. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Seji Saji. Uh, Deputy Director General of the National Disaster Management Organization, bringing us up to speed on the disbursement of the support package for victims of the June 3 twin flood and fire disaster. Anna, yeah, for me. I mean, this is so emotional. Mm -hmm. how, how were you feeling, you know, um, talking to Kasim? Well, I mean, emotions were all over the place, but then again, you have to be a professional and suck it in and then do the job. I mean, his story is one that gets you thinking, what if it were me? Would I yeah. been able, would I, would I have been that strong to have survived all this? Because he, at a point he told me that he's gone through so many skin grafts. That's where they take a, a part of yeah. the skin on his legs to replace another part then they wait for the part they took off their legs to heal then they can take off again to fix another part of the body so i should tell you that he's been through a lot he for one has been in uh, in the hospital on admission at 37 for close to four years oh. and he still has more surgeries to do oh because God. now he has his skull more or less is artificial Artificial? Yes. How? So his, at a point when he was discharged, he go home and then he noticed there was some kind of liquid oozing out of his head. Mm. And so he went back and then he went to do a scan. And that's when the scan was a, a CT scan was able to show that uh, the skull, parts of the skull was also destroyed by the fire. And so now they have to take out and then replace with some artificial material to so that it, it can at least hold the brain intact. And so for now, he always has to walk with a headgear because a single knock to the head can cause real damage to him. Wow. Mm -hmm. What a way it's, to it's, live it's, your it's, life. It's, it's that difficult. It's that difficult. But at least he's doing something good for yeah, himself. Yeah, I mean, yeah. others took their packages and then they probably must have spent it. But he has gone into farming and it's looking good, uh, despite the challenges, but it's really looking good. I mean, I think the resilience that he has mm -hmm. shown is quite admirable. Yes. And wow. Anyway, right, so meanwhile, the mayor of Accra, Mohamed Ajay Soa, has disclosed to City News that all the victims of the June 3 disaster have been compensated. The mayor urged motorists and citizens to be cautious, um, especially at fuel station. Well, let's move to some other stories and a joint task force from the Cantonments Police Station and the Lada de Kotopo Municipal Assembly, LADMA, today restricted commuters plying the ring road through the La community without no smacks. The exercise was done as a follow-up to the Assembly's distribution of over 20,000 no smacks to residents within the municipal municipality last month as part of measures to contain the spread of COVID-19. Now, the Assembly state that the exercise was to enforce strict compliance with directives on the wearing of nose masks to forestall the further spread of COVID-19. There is more in this report. Last month, the Ladadekotopon Municipal Assembly distributed about 20,000 nose masks to residents of La. This was part of measures by the Assembly to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 in the area. Following the distribution, a task force from Ladma and the Cantonments Police Station was deployed to the Ring Road to enforce strict compliance of the wearing of nose masks. Yes, we are trying to tell you through the municipality you should be wearing a nose mask. And we are strictly enforcing this nose mask idea. The whole thing is to help the system to help stem the spread of the virus. Commuters who were applying the stretch without nose masks were denied access to their destinations. For those who could afford some of the nose masks from vendors who were near, they were allowed to continue with their journey. One of the commuters, Mustafa Kwe, tells City News he cannot afford a nose mask. 
This was after a verbal exchange with the police. They asked me to buy one. I said, I don't have money to buy it. I have to buy it. And the policeman started arguing with me. They asked me to come down from the vehicle. I came down and they've made me stood here for more than five minutes now. It's appropriate to get a new one. I don't have the means. I'm not working at now. Now I'm not working. I don't have money to buy it. If it is a national assignment, why is it that they are not sharing the nose mask the way they were sharing the hand sanitizer? And they are telling me I'm trying to be stubborn. What is the stubbornness in this? I don't have money. But don't you see two cities to know to be money. Mm. Two cities is money to me. If you think two cities is not money, you the authorities. Why don't you buy one for me? The municipal chief executive of Ladma, Reverend Solomon Kote Nikwe, advised residents to adhere to the safety precautions following the easing of restrictions by the president. The protocols are still supposed to be observed. So we are advising them. Then easing the restrictions doesn't mean we should not follow the protocols. We should rather follow the protocols because it's rather becoming very tight because for 25 abandoned. So if they are mesh grind, you have to wash your hands, carry your sanitizer, self tax You see, someone the COVID, I mean, see written on the persons, so we should be careful. I mean, <laughs> prevention is better than cure. The exercise will be replicated in other communities within the municipality in the coming days. You're still watching the City Newsroom on City TV. Still to come, Electoral Commission assures no Ghanaian will be disenfranchised in the upcoming 2020 general elections. Meanwhile, the Commission suspends its pilot voter registration exercise in the Western region. Well, we have the details coming up shortly. Don't go away. and dads out there. We are bringing school to the radio. Parents, the Ministry of Education, the Ghana Education Service, GBC and USAID are starting an exciting new radio education program to help your child to continue learning to read at home. It is the Ghana Learning Radio, the reading program. Beginning 15th June 2020, some of your favorite primary school teachers will take you and your child through exciting, interactive and easy to follow radio lessons that will contain stories, interactive games, riddles and humorous characters. We are planning two sessions of reading for B1 to B3 for your child from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays with repeats on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays from 4 to 5 p.m. Think of it as school on the radio. During this outbreak of COVID-19, stay safe and get ready for a whole new way of learning. Tune in to the fun June 15, 10.30 a.m. on all GBC radio channels nationwide. We will be waiting for you. Learn to read, read to learn. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Education, GES, GBC and USAID. Data, extra minutes, and extra unlimited calls. Not just that. Even our extra data doesn't expire. See the fill up. Simply dial star 111 hash to bundle now. Airtel to go. Life is simple. Welcome back. Let's bring you some more stories. Uh, the Electoral Commission of Ghana is allaying fears that some Ghanaians may be disenfranchised in the upcoming 2020 general elections. 
Now, some political parties led by the NDC are opposing the decision by the Commission to use only a passport and the Ghana card as a prerequisite for the registration. But at the end of its two-day piloting program, the Commission revealed that its guarantee system will cater for persons who do not have the required documents. There is more in this report. In some few weeks to come, Ghanaians will have to participate in a new voter registration exercise ahead of the 2020 general election. This is despite stiff opposition from the inter-party resistance against the new voters register. With COVID-19 in mind, the Electoral Commission has come out with a lot of protocols to ensure that persons who come to the registration center are safe from contracting the virus. We are here at the Greater Accra Regional Office of the Electoral Commission. Right here, the few things that we've observed even before we speak to officials here is that there are some markings here to help with the social distancing protocols. If I report to the registration center, what would be the first thing that we'll have to do? Okay, anyone who comes here will have to wash his or her hands here after washing, and then you come and then join the queue and we have markings here indicating the distance between those in the queue so, so far how many people have you had here um so far today about 60 but still ongoing so when they come this is how the process uh, they, they go through how many people did you register yesterday Yesterday was about uh, 55. Now, we want you to take us to the registration center itself yes. and take us okay. through what the processes are. You see this gentleman here, and be be before he sat down, uh, the thermometer gun was used to check his or her temperature. So when everything is OK, then t the main form called the registration form 1A will be completed for the person. That one is captured manually. We use pen to write. Will take your personal details. So when it is done, then the uh, applicant will tamper at is being done. Then the registration officer will also sign. After these papers have been filled, what process is so next? When it is done here, then the form will be given to you. Then you move. This is the first stage. Okay. Then you come to the second stage. This is the second stage, where the details on this form. The on, on this form will be keyed onto the laptop here. So when it is done, but before when it is done, then they will take your biometrics here. The uh, handprint, uh, thumbprint scanner is there. Okay. Then the camera is also there. Okay. And when everything is done, then it will be printed. So the personal de details that were captured with pen on the main form is what will also uh, appear here printed. Is this to suggest that it's an instant? Yes, card. Issuance of ID card. Instant. So the moment everything is done here, you get your card before you leave the center. We'll be speaking to some of the people who have gone through this process already to get their reactions. Coming here suggests that you're a concerned voter and citizen. There are two entering positions on this. You see on one side, the NDC and some other political parties on the other side. In your view, what do you think that these parties can do so that we can have a very smooth process? I think that it's about cooperation. We, we need uh, the cooperation of everybody to make it successful. What can you tell us about the guarantee system that you're going to use? Uh, the guarantee aspect of the whole research is that the EC is saying you do have, don't have any of the two prescribed uh, ID cards, that is the Ghana card and the passport. When you come to the center, you will need two people who are registered voters to guarantee for you. What criteria should I meet to be able to guarantee for someone? Oh, provided you can't prove that you know the person. Okay. Uh, not necessarily only these ones. Okay. Uh -huh. So if the, the, there is any other, I mean, you can indicate. The concerns about disenfranchising a lot of people doesn't yeah, arrive. It, it won't okay at all. It won't, it, it, I mean, it's, it's not going to because even the previous registration, it, was, it wasn't everybody who had these prescribed cards. 
and people, I mean, the guarantee system was in place. So it covered such, 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 such people. And this time it has even been enhanced by expanding the number of people that one can guarantee for. So that's it. Uh, the day two and the ending day or the final day for the voter registration exercise, I mean the piloting here at the Greater Accra Regional EC Head Office. So we're following up this story to know when the EC will come up with the actual date for the new voters registration exercise and the other protocols that we need to adhere to. Reporting for City News, Hansen Ajeman. Now, day two of the pilot voters registration exercise in the Volta region has ended fairly well compared to the first day, which was saddled with challenges with the system. Now, according to the EC, the two-day exercise is to test the BVR kits and the registration process ahead of the main registration exercise. However, the Volta regional branch of the NDC says the exercise has been a disaster and it proves that the EC is not ready to compile a new electoral role. City News' is Benjamin Aklama covered the exercise and reports. Aside from the low turnout recorded for the exercise, which took place at the EC's whole office, the process was also saddled with delays caused by slow internet and breakdown of equipment on the first day. The new BVR kit failed to respond after 2 p.m. and by the time, just about 30 people out of the nearly 100 people who had turned up for the exercise had been registered. The BVR system indicated that some of the new registrants already had their data captured in the new system. The exercise came to a close at 5 p.m. instead of the initially advertised 6.30 p.m. due to the challenges with the system. In a City News interview, the Volta Regional Organizer of the NPP, Emmanuel Kosi Boja, maintained that the process was smooth. Oh, okay. Um... Today we're invited by the EC to, to participate and, and also observe the, the processes that will be employed to go into the voter registration exercise. And this is a pilot project. And, 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 and so we, we got here this morning. Uh, to, to my surprise, anyway, uh, <laughs> we met our brothers from the NDC here. In their numbers, you can see them. All the, almost all the regional officers are here uh, to our surprise, but it's good for democracy and it's good for Ghana that yes, they will disagree to agree. So once they are here to participate in it, and you can see some of their executives going through the process as well. And so it, it's good for us. Um, the measures put in place here is good. Uh, social distancing uh, protocols that are being adhered to and observed is also working here. You immediately you enter, you see your Veronica bucket with uh, sanitizer, uh, liquid soap, um, tissue, and almost everything. I can see two, two uh, of those things here. And then after you have washed your hand, well, a gentleman, you meet a gentleman who will take your temperature or check your temperature. After which, then you move to the, the registration center itself where you go to the first table to, for your details to be captured onto the Form 1A. Uh, the registration officer will take your bio data, that's uh, your basic information, and then you fill it onto a Form 1A. Uh, after which you will move to the next desk where the data entry clerk is. And the data entry clerk will now lift the information from the Form 1A onto the computer, the laptop. And, 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 and it will be printed on the Form 1C. Uh, after the data is being captured into the system, your fingerprint is taken, and then the picture is also taken. What I've observed this time is that the fingerprint scanner is quite high. Uh, unlike the first one, or other fingerprint scanners that I have come across with, you place your fingers on it, and it takes time for it to capture. Sometimes you have to adjust yourself, sometimes you have to wash your hand, you have to wash your hand, clean your hand. But this, immediately you place on the scanner, it captures your finger, which is good. Then the picture, unlike the other pictures that we've taken, or other ID cards that were produced by the electoral commission, the picture quality of this is very high, very good. And uh, uh, 
it, it will be difficult to say that you would be able to identify somebody because of the high level of the pictures that have been taken. Meanwhile, the NDC's Volta Regional Secretary, James Gunu, insists the process has been a disaster. He said the NDC will do all within its legal remits to stop the EC from conducting the registration exercise. In actual fact, our stand on the new voters' register remains unchanged. We still believe that this nation doesn't need a new voters' register at this very moment. And we will do everything possible legally within our mandate to ensure that the new register does not come on. Sure. If there should be anything at all, that should be the limited registration exercise. The limited registration exercise we have been told by the statistical services that we have about 650,000 eligible voters who have attained the age 18 and above so the ec can manage using the nursery covid 19 protocols to ensure that these people are captured onto the register we have observed a lot of challenges with this system the Volta Regional Director of the Electoral Commission, Adupo Dogbe Selomi, told City News that the EC had learned from the pilot process and was better prepared for the main registration process. After the pilot, we detected one or two problems which we communicated to uh, Accra. So they factored them also into making the machines that they'll be bringing to the field more efficient. So the problem we saw yesterday will not happen again. Yeah. For certain news, I'm Benjamin Aklama. Well, let's now go to the Western region where the suspension of the pilot registration exercise by the Electoral Commission has left some party officials in shock. The EC has so far registered 73 persons. But speaking to City News, the Western Regional NDC Communications Director Kek Mensa says they were told the exercise would not come off on the final day of the pilot due to challenges with the BVR machines. Invited by the Electoral Commission for a pilot voter registration exercise, which commenced yesterday. Yes, yesterday we came over, uh, we had a very successful exercise, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, 73 people registered. I had my with me. So this morning we came uh, for the final uh, day of the exercise. Uh, and then when we were about to kick start, I mean, uh, we realized that the te technicians were around the, the BVR machine only for the, the regional director to inform us that the, there is a technical hitch for that matter. We cannot continue with it. Yes, I, 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 I was not surprised because yesterday I, I, I got to know that for this exercise, the, the, the pilot, they are using only one machine. So whenever anything of that such occurs, definitely cannot uh, I mean, continue. Hence, the information given us that they cannot continue the exercise. So as I speak to you now, uh, they, they packed the machine and uh, we are still at the premises waiting for the, the regional director to tell us uh, the, what exact problem is, whether they are going to uh, continue with it or when that, uh, that uh, problem will be solved. So that is what... You're still watching the City Newsroom on City TV. When we come back, the new Patriotic Party NPP settles on June 20 for its parliamentary and presidential primaries, which will be held at electoral areas due to the coronavirus outbreak. We'll be back shortly with the details. Do stay.
businesses are evolving with the changing times and the City Business Festival is doing the same. In the month of June, the City Business Festival goes digital. City TV in collaboration with APSA Bank will give SMEs the opportunity to reboot their businesses with expert forums, discussion platforms and interactive Zoom sessions. There will be a lesson for every business. Join the virtual business forums every Tuesday in June at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and gain the knowledge you need to kickstart your business. Explore new ways of engaging your customers with the e-commerce forum on Tuesday the 9th of June at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get tips from the Agribusiness Forum on how to create another career in agribusiness on Tuesday the 16th of June 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And get all the industry knowledge with the Trade Forum on the topic Will Export Trade Be the Same Again on the 23rd of June 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Revamp your business and work environment this June with the virtual business forums only on City TV every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. To be interactive and ask questions pertinent to your business, join in the forum via Zoom. To participate via Zoom, register by calling 0205-973-973. That's 0205-973-973. City Business Festival is powered by City TV and Absa Bank with support from the Ghana Investment and Promotion Center. People are opening doors for me or driving for me or giving me a huge respect. Not for me, for Shani Cooper. Not to Shani Cooper is the respect. The respect is for the state of Israel. Well, one day I was in Quebec, <laughs> a vacation with my cousin, and someone calls me from Brazil saying, Do you want to be ambassador in Ghana? <laughs> I said, Yes, yes I do. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's do some politics now. And the new Patriotic Party NPP says voting for its parliamentary and presidential primaries will be done in electoral areas. The party says the practice where delegates converge on one place to cast their ballot will be avoided due to the coronavirus outbreak. At a National Executive Committee meeting on Wednesday evening, General Secretary of the NPP, John Buedu, says the primaries uh, will come off on June 20. Executive and National Council meeting today, the party decided that its parliamentary primaries will come on on June 20th, 2020. In all the 168 constituencies that we have sitting members of parliament, we also decided that we will hold these elections at the various electoral commission demarcated electoral areas in order to ensure that we respect the measures put in place by government to protect ourselves and protect our members. We also ensure that all the social distance protocols are observed and we believe that we'll be able to have a successful conference. We will later come out with rules and regulations guiding this uh, uh, parliamentary primaries and also come out with a total list of all members contesting on our tickets as decided by the National Executive Committee. The National Council of our party also accepted a report 
from the National Jetting Committee that indicated that at the opening and closing of nomination for presidential candidate of our party, it is only one person, Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado, the President of the Republic of Ghana, who filed at the end of the closing of nomination. So the National Council have endorsed that decision that Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado is the sole candidate of the new Petrote Party and very soon will communicate to the general public his acclamation. Now, despite the outbreak of coronavirus in the country, some residents of Yeji remain adamant uh, to the wearing of nose masks as a safety protocol. The situation has forced the chairman of the Pu East District Health Committee to call on the assembly to begin strict enforcement of its own directives. City News' Michael Saponinfum reports. Yeji is a major market center in the Bunu East region. It is the first community in the region to record a COVID-19 case when a 31-year-old driver who plies the Yeji to Kumasi Road tested positive for the virus. But this has not deterred residents, and these are their reasons. I'm a storekeeper. Using the, the nose mask has become difficult. Sometimes when you use it and a customer comes here, when you are talking, the person will not hear. That's why I'm not using it. But I try to protect myself and distance myself whenever they come here. That is why I'm not using it. With the issue of not wearing the mask, I know I have and I've heard that there is a case in Yeji. I think for a, uh, three days ago or so, by then. Uh, the, the wearing of the mask looks suffocating. I don't know. It's like because this sickness has been an emergency for some time now, I think uh, those designing the mask has not really taken time to design it to make the individuals comfortable. I don't know. The type we are using when you put it on, sometimes it suffocates you. So. We're just praying and keeping social distance to see if it will work. Even though sometimes we put it on, but we're not making it too regular because it, it, it makes me so uncomfortable. The Bono East Regional Director of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Fred Adumaku Boatin, has been speaking on the situation at EAG. And as we said, testing is part of prevention. Once we know and we have taken this man, you are not scared of going to pick a car and getting the disease. So that is what we have done. And let's come to this issue of masks. When you go around, you will see people without a mask. In fact, Yeji, they just called us to say that people should wear the mask. That is the only way that you can be prevented, or if I have, you don't give it to somebody. As to how, it's for all of us. The traditional, the owners of the land are here. They will have to really enforce that, look, if we don't wear, all of us are at risk. So as for the risk communication, we have to continue doing. A worried chairman of the District Health Committee, Nana Siahine Mori Kwakuji, who is also the Gasa now moving to parliament the speaker has rejected a motion from boko central mp mahama yariga challenging ci 126 the instrument if approved will guide the conduct of the 2020 elections and stipulate the use of one's passport and the ghana card as the only identity documents required to register onto the new voters roll. in a memo to mahama yariga the speaker asked him to rather appear before the subsidiary legislation committee to get his grievances captured there is more in the following report. The 2020 elections will be conducted based on the guidelines stipulated in CI 126, which is currently under consideration by the Subsidiary Legislation Committee of Parliament. By any unforeseen circumstances, the instrument will mature on the 10th of June. Following the Speaker's rejection of his motion, the Boko Central MP, Mahama Yariga, appeared before the Subsidiary Legislation Committee earlier on Wednesday to make his case. Mahama Yariga's main argument against the CI is that the use of the Ghana card and passport for voter registration is in breach of laws on citizenship in the 1992 constitution. The committee is expected to present its report by close of week. On the floor of the House, Trade and Industry Minister Alan Tremating appeared to answer questions on the state of the project to reopen the Commander Sugar Factory. 
the Foreign Affairs Committee of the House as part of its oversight duty toward the Accra International Conference Center. The team found that the center was fast deteriorating. Engineer Mike Addo is the structural engineer at the center. The maintenance regime yeah. has not been that adequate okay. all over the years. So this started, uh, the first report I saw on this was in 2014. And it was almost like this. And therefore it means that 2014. So it means that uh, way before then, this had already started. If you look at this, the, the most affected, the most severely affected column 30% of the body is gone. 30% of the body is gone. The body of what? Of the columns. Of the columns? Yes. Are gone. We don't know what is down there. But you see, the column transmits the load to the foundation. And that's how we wrap up. This has been the City Newsroom. Don't forget our City Newsroom. Um, CityNewsroom.com has more information. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube for more exclusive video content from CityTV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store and keep updated on the go. You can also watch CityTV on DSTV channel 363 and on GoTV channel 182. My name is Premier Dunyame. And my name is Nanatu Forbwati. Many thanks for watching.